I know you also wanted to talk about how um, how it's different. I know we kind of discussed it a little bit. You know, SEO for big retail versus maybe you know these tech companies. Do you have any other points you wanted to make on that front? Using their AI and all of the different tools that they have, we're actually able to increase our revenues three, four, and five times. We're not only weathering the storm, but we're actually growing right now. Just that um, we found, I mean, you know this, I don't have to tell you this. Google Search Console yeah. is an unbelievable tool in the B2B space. Right. Um, it's, I mean, I think more so than in retail and e-commerce because Google has the eyes to see everything that's being written in a particular technology sector. And it's pretty much showing you early on what they're interested in giving you a chance on. So that's how we got into, uh, I'll give you an example. Yeah. Um, again, sticking with my Indico um, account, they're into something called intelligent process automation. Okay. okay. Even before we started the SEO, we looked at Search Console and we saw that um, it, Google was letting us nibble on some of the stuff, even without the content. Queer, based on query data or based on crawl coverage report? What are you looking query at? Query data. Query data, okay. Yeah, this impressions. The, these, are the, these are the queries that you're somewhat ranking for. Exactly. Let's beef that up. Let's do a proof of concept with a blog post. Doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Let's do a proof of concept on a very specific topic, like for example, intelligent process automation for insurance. That was one of our topics. Let's put it out there. Let's see where it lands. We waited uh, a month and a half. We're getting all of a sudden all this new, these new queries with a decent amount of um, volume. And we were off to the races. So we did it, enough of those to realize a blog post is great, but let's do a pillar page. Right. And our pillar page in, uh, for two years now is on page one consistently for the term You don't have to say the term. In right. insurance. And we, uh, we doubled down and did financial services. So we have a, another pillar page for IPA for financial services. Then we even went further. And so this is all about intent, right? Right. So we know that if somebody searches for intelligent process automation for insurance, they're not kicking tires. They need something for their job, right? Um, so there, it's a level of intent. Then we said, what about different types of insurance? Right. How about uh, P&C insurance, property and casualty? Right. If somebody types in IPA for P&C, you know that they're looking for something. So we created a pillar page for that. And all these pillar pages are supported by approximately, you have one pillar page and then you have sub pages with, like linking from the pillar page to like blog posts, right? Uh, so we have like now, we have eight or nine pillar pages. They're all interlinked depending on the relevancy. It's not just one linking off like a tree. Right, so you might have eight pillar pages, but each pillar page, let's say you have a pillar page on uh, fake thing, boat insurance. Do you have links off of that pillar page to individual blog posts? And yes. if so, how many on average, or it doesn't matter? Um, so we tried, I just went through it again uh, to revise it. We try to have at least three links from blog posts, if they're relevant, we don't put right. a, uh, if three blog posts to a pillar page, and then the pillar pages interrelate as well. Right. So if okay. the insurance pillar page links to the property and casualty page, which links to the life insurance pillar page. And it's all different content. It's not just a rehash of, uh, of one. And this is all about what you started off saying. It's all about those internal links within those pillar pages inside the site pointing to each other. Exactly. Telling Google what you are saying. It, basically, those internal links are telling Google these pages are about this topic. And this is how you get more specific. This is how you get less, more generic, and so forth. And it's really telling Google what your site is about. Exactly. And it's funny because I've had uh, probably published numerous videos with different SEOs on similar topics about how important these pillar pages. Some calling them hub pages. Some are calling them um, I don't know different types of names. Yeah. And it's 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 interesting how important this is. It's kind of like the new link building, um, internal link building. So it's well, cool. it's it's nothing new. You know, they call them pillar pages now. We used right. to call them content hubs. Twenty years ago, we were building content hubs. Right basically the same right. same thing, except more refined now because we understand more the internal link um, thing gives, and Google, of course, has come up with a much stronger NLP now. So we have an eye on the customer, but everything we're doing to have an eye on the uh, potential customer is flowing into Google. 
you know, Google is looking at it the same way that a customer would. Right. And it's interesting because while we were talking about this, whenever somebody speaks about hub pages and these pillar pages, I always think back to um, back in the Ask Jeeves days. They had these like hubs and spokes and stuff like that. Right. And the way they indexed content and put them into different areas was basically how we uh, SEOs are writing content these days and kind of giving Google a map of this is the hub page or the pillar page, these are the spokes from that. Totally. Oh, it's totally the same thing. So it's, it's, it's similar, exactly but it's the same thing. 20 years technology. Different, different uh, nomenclature now they're using. And, and, and this kind of moves into, like you were saying, the natural language processing and BERT and so forth. Um, and, and Google's, you think Google's using this technology to better understand the mapping of the website and the content? No, totally. I'm convinced of it. It's not just, so we have three clients, the same thing's working in different ways. Um, we're producing really good differentiated content and Google is giving many more impressions, um, you know, double the impressions from a year ago for each of these three uh, clients that I'm thinking of in particular. And Google picks up on these pages pretty quickly. What's it like, let's say you hire, I hire you tomorrow and I want to rank number one for, I don't know, yellow web design. Mm -hmm. I mean, how long does it, it's not like you clients hire you and say, I want to rank for these keywords. It's more of like, I'm going to get you more relevant traffic that converts. So you start to see, um, the new impressions for keywords showing up three to four weeks after you publish a page. Okay. Doesn't mean you're going to start to rank as high as you end up ranking. There's sort of a process where if you have good stuff and Google sees people are clicking, you move up. But I would say that um, for the really good pages, it's almost like the 80-20 rule. 20% of our pages do really well and 80% do okay. But you want to make sure you're covering those 20%. For those 20% that outperform, I would say within four months, we see most of our gains. And then, you know, we might be in position five for a long time. And then all of a sudden, there's a uh, core algorithm update and we go to four or right. three or two. Hopefully not nine. Well, that's happened. I, I read an article by you that said you got uh, slammed, I think, in September. I got uh, hit by a core slammed. update. I got hit by a panda update. Yeah. And you uh, waited it out. I waited it out, I got back. I'm curious what's going on with the June and July core updates. It yeah. seems like every search engine blog is down. And Google's ranking themselves or Wikipedia or something like that. Yeah. For the keywords. And but it, you had that situation and we had it too. In September, um, we didn't get crushed, but... Um, for your so, own site or for your clients? Or for, um, clients. Uh -huh. um, and then it popped back up um, and went above where we were before September. We're at our best marking. We're at our best positioning now. We're as high as we've ever been right Even now. after the July core update, yeah. which was a few days ago. Yeah. Cool. It was big. It wasn't as big as June from when I, I just published a blog post now on it. Um, so it was a pretty big update. Um, yeah, I saw I was reading your stuff uh, the other day.